Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Minix Neo N42C. This is a mini PC or an ultralight desktop that is about the size as an Android TV box like the Xiaomi Mi Box uh, or something like the Apple TV, making it really convenient if you're tight on space uh, and you're trying to upgrade from, let's say, a really old uh, secondary laptop or a desktop uh, in your house. Um, it also makes sense for folks that don't need a really powerful gaming, let's say, computer because this really does all the essentials from word processing to browsing the web to connecting to hard drives for a media server things like that uh, that also fits really well into small spaces and also makes it easier to move around if you do need to take it from let's say your work to your home in terms of the processing package, this one is a bit more powerful than your typical uh, fanless mini PC, which tends to run on an Intel Atom processor. Uh, it's probably the X5 series, which is a Cherry Trail quad-core chipset, definitely faster than in previous years, but at the end of the day, it's still not as powerful as, let's say, a, a more premium uh, M series or I series processor. On here we're using an Intel Pentium processor, uh, so it has a slightly faster chipset. It's the N4200, it's quad core, and gives it an extra boost in terms of performance. So the Apollo Lake chipset will be able to handle, let's say, some very light uh, video editing if you have to do that, or Photoshop, things like that. Um, it also comes with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed as opposed to Windows 10 Home Edition, so this makes it a great, again, solution for work and for companies. Uh, this is by Minix, which is a company that typically produces Android TV boxes, but at least they do have uh, quite a few years of experience. We've checked out some of their previous Android variants and we've been pretty impressed with the build and performance so far. Uh, the version here has the, again, 64-bit version of Windows. It has four gigs of built-in RAM, support for, uh, again, additional hard drives. It supports outputs of 4K Ultra HD in terms of monitors and displays, and it also has expandable storage. It uh, has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built right on in, so pretty standard stuff for uh, something uh, of this caliber. Uh, now in terms of pricing, it is a little bit high. Uh, the N42C, because it has that Apollo-like chipset compared to Atom, is priced currently MRSP at $300. I.O. is built right on in, and the package here, we just have the computer right on top. We'll take a closer look at it in a second. Down below here, we have the accessories, including a product brochure for the unit and some of their other variants, which you can see are running on Android. Here we have the N42C uh, manual, which is printed in color. There's a QR code that you can scan and some warranty information. It looks like it's going to use USB Type-C as the power lead, which is very convenient. Here is the full-size HDMI cable that you get. There's also a kind of docking station or mounting bracket. If you want to mount this thing onto a desk or onto a ceiling or wall, that's entirely possible because of the small size. Taking a look at the hardware, it has the same design language as other Minix TV boxes that we've checked out. It's made out of fairly sleek looking polycarbonate plastic. It's a one piece shell and on the edge we have access to three USB 3.0 ports for file transfer up to five gigabits per second, a dedicated power switch, and then there's an LED light on the front here that will tell you when the unit is turned on. On the side we have a few ventilation ports and on the back we have access to the power port, ethernet for wired uh, internet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. Uh, there's a mini display port there's also a full-size HDMI port, and there's a USB Type-C port, which can be used to provide power, it can also be used to connect it to another external display, it can be used for thumb drives, file transfer, so and so forth. It's really nice to see a standard USB Type-C built onto a uh, mini TV box. Finally, there is a 3.5mm headphone or auxiliary port for connecting to speakers as well as external microphones. And on the back, there are four rubber feet that prevents the unit from sliding around on a flat surface or on a desk, and there is the Minix logo as well as the kind of Windows certification sticker. So a fairly clean design. Uh, the power cord that you saw previously also has a detachable prong, so you can switch it out for uh, other adapters that came included in the box if you are traveling to another country. Now we're waiting for the computer to boot into Windows for the first time. That took just uh, you know a few minutes to complete. We've already completed the Wi-Fi setup. Uh, first impressions would be that general navigation around the UI as well as setting up kind of the Wi-Fi clicking next 
say, saying yes to Cortana, all those things seem to be actually fairly swift and responsive. Secondly, this isn't a completely fanless computer. It's a very small fan, but it produces almost no sound, so it's as good as getting a, a almost silent unit. And uh, even if you have a small heater in the background, if you have a mechanical keyboard, uh, that noise completely covers up the sound of a very small fan that only kicks in when the CPU is performing uh, high load tasks. So when you're trying to open, let's say, you know, 10 or 20 tabs in the browser, when you're trying to load up Photoshop for the first time, things like that, you'll hear it very uh, occasionally in a really silent environment. Third observation is there is no built-in speaker, so uh, you have to use the auxiliary port, or if you're using HDMI, make sure that there is a speaker built onto your TV. If you're trying to play back sound directly, let's say from YouTube, or if you have something in a presentation, just keep that in mind. There are, there's no built-in speakers on the TV box itself. Otherwise, if we open up the File Explorer, we can take a quick look at this computer and how much, uh, let's say, storage is left. So there's only about 17 gigs that's available out of the 32 gigs. Uh, so you can see about, you know, half of the portion is taken up by the operating system. Um, so it doesn't leave you with too much room if you plan on storing lots of files and, and movies uh, and, and, let's say, photos directly on the unit. Uh, so I would recommend plugging in a hard drive because it does support a SATA drive, it does support USB Type-C, uh, so those are all benefits. You can see that there is voice search for a digital voice uh, assistant. However, just like the speakers, there are no built-in mics on this uh, mini PC, so you have to plug in your own microphone as well if you want to access the voice recorder or use it for Skype uh, with a video camera. Luckily, again, three USB ports is quite a few. Typically, we'll only see one or two on a mini PC, so I like the fact that you get lots of I.O. built right on in. There's not too much bloatware on here. In fact, you get only the standard apps, so there is a basic alarm clock. You have access to basic utility tools like a calculator, calendar. Uh, we do have access to Excel, uh, as well as a uh, PowerPoint and Word. So those uh, basic tools are built right on in. Over here, we also have the kind of Intel graphics settings. So if we launch into that, uh, it's using just integrated HD graphics. Uh, so this is not going to be a replacement for a gaming laptop or a gaming desktop by any means, although you can still run uh, apps uh, and titles like Minecraft on low uh, frame rate settings. It will still render correctly, uh, you know, considering that it runs as well on Intel Atom devices. So on an Apollo Lake chipset, it will of course run slightly better, but still it's by no stretch a gaming machine. Verifying system properties, we do in fact have Windows 10 Pro Edition installed. It's a fully licensed and activated uh, version, and you can see that the clock speed here uh, goes as low as 1.1 gigahertz, and there's also a turbo mode that will make it slightly faster, four gigs of built-in RAM, and it's a 64-bit version of Windows, of course, since it's the Pro Edition. Let's open up Edge and take a quick look at the web browsing experience, and that seems actually fairly snappy. Uh, it's still loading some of the videos, uh, however, and some of the ads. I like to use the New York Times because it's a complex web page that is uh, a good benchmark since there are so many elements that lower-end hardware and processors will typically struggle with. Uh, so it seems like uh, right now with a okay Wi-Fi reception, again, relatively full bars, it seems. The page is loading up pretty quickly, but not everything is rendered all at once. If we're taking a closer look at the web browsing performance, in terms of video playback, it also seems to do reasonably well. I've loaded up YouTube, and you can see that everything is rendering uh, in pretty decent speed. If I just tap on a video, it should load up soon. And we also have quite a few other tabs open in the background right now. Uh, here's another video from the New York Times that's uh, playing back. Uh, so overall playback experience, it seems all right. And again, we do have quite a few programs uh, open in the background right now, and everything still seems to be pretty smooth. There's no real thermal uh, throttling that I'm experiencing. So here is kind of a New York Times video, and you can see it's also playing. Uh, with four gigs of RAM on board, I feel like it has plenty of space in terms of uh, the ability to multitask fairly smoothly between different programs without really exp experienced, experiencing too much lag or delay, uh, which is the plus. So you can you know, again, open up more tabs, you can open up more programs without having to worry about closing things up uh, in between just to save on, uh, again, RAM management. So it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Uh, one thing I am noticing, though, is that the Wi-Fi, although it seems like the uh, 
you know, signal strength is quite high, I'm not sure if it's actually a really strong connection or not because you do have to wait a few seconds for pages to load. Uh, and I was expecting it to be just a little bit snappier uh, considering that it does have the Apollo chip, chip processor built right on in. But maybe because since the antenna is integrated, uh, it's, it struggles a little bit more uh, in terms of passing through many layers of walls. So I would suggest using the ethernet or putting this closer to a router actually to ensure that you get the fastest Wi-Fi uh, you know, experience. But all in all, not bad in terms of media streaming as well as browsing the web. Still feels relatively snappy and responsive even after many tabs are opened. Uh, so let's close out of this. So this was just a CPU benchmark. Uh, I was looking up for the Intel Pentium. Again, it goes all the way up to two gigahertz and it is indeed about 1.6 times to roughly two times faster than on a comparable Intel, uh, let's say, Atom chipset, so you should expect faster performance into day and day use, uh, especially with general navigation around the UI, it definitely feels a lot snappier and faster. Boot up times are also very quick. It takes under 20 seconds to boot up from clean, and you can run any of these mobile titles from the Microsoft Store, such as Asphalt 8. Some of these mobile games also run really smoothly without any problems. Same things with these general menu navigation, looks, looking at photos, file management, things like that. Uh, it all renders without any problems. Um, so here's also an example of uh, using the uh, PowerPoint, which is built right on in, and it does a good job. Uh, again, for these light productivity tools, no real issues as far as moving some of these files back and forth. And finally, here's also a Word document that I was playing around with. Same thing, it works well even when you have other tabs open in the background. And since it has the ability to connect up to three external displays, one with the mini display port, one with USB Type-C, one with the HDMI, you can actually mirror it onto three separate monitors and let's say open up three different apps on each page and it still works really well. So here's a cold boot just to give you a better idea of exactly how quickly it loads up. Again, pretty quick, it takes under 20 seconds. It's not quite as fast as a machine that has an SSD because it is using eMMC, similar to what you find on a um, SD card or on a thumb drive, just to save on the cost a little bit. So if they had used SSD, it would have been a slightly faster, uh, but all in all, really not too bad at all. That's our review of the Minix N42C mini PC. I think that this is good enough for most consumers and businesses for productivity. Things like Photoshop, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, presentations, and for browsing the web, streaming video through YouTube or Netflix, all works flawlessly on the unit. Uh, the Apollo Lake chipset truly is faster in performance, smoother in the day-to-day -day compared to a Intel Atom chipset. It still retains a very lightweight small form factor. In fact, here it is next to a standard Android TV box. This is the Xiaomi Mi box. And here is the iPhone uh, kind of 6 Plus, which is a 5.5 inch phone. You get a better sense of really how small this thing is. So it's easy to mount onto a ceiling, onto a wall, uh, which could be, again, quite useful depending on how you want to set it up for a smaller business. Uh, finally, it has a wealth of ports. Now, the only downside that I could really find was the pricing. At $300, it is a little expensive, uh, considering that we can see more and more budget-oriented laptops and ultra-portables starting to creep into the same kind of price category. Uh, still, most of those sub-$300 laptops that you'll find will probably have an Intel Atom or Intel Celeron processor, but uh, the Pentium in here, again, the Polylink chip, is still going to be a little faster. Thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This has been the Minix N42C Mini Windows 10 computer.